Hey there, worship guitarists. Have you ever considered the idea that playing the guitar is kind of like speaking a language? You know, in the same way that we use words to communicate our ideas and our emotions, our playing actually has the power to convey spiritual truths and connect with our congregation on a deep and a personal level. And here's what I mean. In the same way, if you were to convey a scripture or you want to share something with somebody, the way that you use your language can determine how that idea is going to be carried across. And that's where our guitar parts come in because when we are singing worship songs or praise songs, we are singing lyrics that were basically informed by scripture and the way that we're going to be playing can actually help support how those ideas are being conveyed and how that connects with our congregation on a deep and a personal level. Now in 1 John 10 verse 27, Jesus says that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So what's interesting for me is that it talks about knowing a voice. Now as worship guitarists, we can also develop our own voice on the guitar and that voice can speak directly to the hearts of those listening and drawing people closer to God. Now of course I'm not saying that the guitar parts in and of themselves is a spiritual truth or anything. That's obviously the word the word of God is the spiritual truth. That is what we are singing. But how we develop our voice on the guitar to communicate and to support those ideas actually plays a very big role. And that's why in this video, I want to explore how you can become more articulate on the guitar and learn to speak through your playing that you can better actually support whatever's happening on a Sunday. Now, by focusing on articulation and phrasing, you can create a unique sound that communicates those spiritual truths and ideas and it can really transcend the mere notes and the techniques of guitar playing. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at five practical ways that you can develop your own guitar voice and have something meaningful to say every time you play. All right, so our first point is that it's important to listen to and to emulate vocalists. You see, that's one of the things with, say, the blues guitar revolution, when that happened, a lot of those guitar players, they didn't start out playing licks. Of course, that was the time that contemporary music kind of um, came to the forefront on the electric guitar. When that came around, those guitarists mostly played melodies and they mostly emulated a human voice. That's even why the slide guitar um, kind of got developed to emulate some of that sound you heard from a vocal side. And then when you look at a player like Derek Truck, for example, he's an amazing slide player. They don't have these frets on the guitar, so they can play some really awesome phrases very similar to the way that a vocalist might sing something. Now, of course, unless you've blessed with a skill and talent like Derek Trucks, you're probably not gonna play with that same intensity on a Sunday, but what you're definitely gonna do is you are going to want to emulate the human voice because it's very possible for you to play your guitar and for it to sound very methodical and clinical um, if you just kind of go through the motions as it relates to how you play it. But when you listen to vocalists and you kind of pay attention to their phrasing and their own concept of rhythm, you'll notice that it's very different. It's not so methodical, it's not so clinical. There's the human element that shines through in how they sing and how they communicate those lyrics. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do on the guitar to kind of emulate some of those things. For example, if you use something like a volume swell, if you think of backing vocals or a choir, they, they might do these what we call oohs and ahs and kind of just swell from nothing into something, then you can kind of emulate some of that on the guitar, for example, like this. So it's a very gentle sound that you kind of slowly but surely you're swelling into the sound and then it's almost like the way that you're using your vibrato to kind of vocalize that sound as if you were singing it. Now, if you just play the, the note like this, it's kind of like you, you, you're shouting a little bit because there's that attack of the pick that immediately calls attention to the note. And sometimes that's needed, right? In the same way that there are times that singers belt out a melody, you can do the same on the guitar. But a lot of times in worship, you kind of want that gentle 
approach that I've just demonstrated and volume swells is a really great way to do that. Something else that singers do a lot is they change from one note to another by kind of blending in or scooping into a note. They don't sing both notes distinctly as different notes. For example, if I play, then I play all three of the notes, I just pick them like that. But a more vocal way of doing that might be something like, you see I'm hammering on and then I'm sliding. So even though I'm only picking the note once, I'm using these articulation techniques like hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, bending, and vibrato to play the melody. Now, we'll get to the technique section a little bit later, but for now, I want you to go ahead and listen to some well-known worship songs and try and play those melody notes on the guitar. And what we're going to do now to demonstrate that is we're going to look at God, I Look To You, there's an instrumental section where they basically, we're gonna be playing the bridge melody, but on the guitar, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways in which I can go ahead and vocalize the notes on the guitar to sound more like a singer. So let's go ahead and check that out now. see I just do things like this using hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, vibrato. These are all known as articulation techniques. So when I start the melody, I just pick it once and then the rest of the notes kind of flow in the way that you might sing it. So there's a lot that you can learn by playing some of these epic melodies on the guitar and try and make it sound as close as possible to that vocal and ultimately singing on your guitar. And the trick is not to pick every note, but rather to use techniques like I've just shown you. It's a combination of hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, and vibrato. All right, so moving on to our second point, it's all about playing with intention and purpose. Now, we all know what it's like to uh, speak before you think, right? You can kind of get into trouble sometimes if you speak before you think, or even if you're communicating with somebody and they don't really listen to you, they just want to speak, they just want to say something for the sake of saying something. And sadly, so many musicians do the same thing. So what you can do before you start playing, just take a moment to consider what it is that you want to communicate through your playing. And it's not just what you're going to play, but it's also going to be about how you're going to be playing that. So instead of just kind of going through the motions of, you know, grabbing a chord and strumming it or picking a note and, you know, picking it um, all over the guitar neck, striking the notes just for the sake of striking it or choosing a scale up and down the scale, kind of aimlessly playing, that's not going to be very intentional. What you instead want to do is you want to think about the not necessarily just what you are saying but how you are saying it and that's all about the emotional side that you want to use when it comes to conveying some of these truths or ideas on the guitar now what do i mean by truths obviously when you're looking at your charts of the songs that you are playing or just if you know the songs by memory it's important to pay attention to the lyrics right number one the lyrics and number two what the song is doing at that moment in time, and then find what emotional story or what emotions are you going to use to surround that particular part in the song and how you are going to go ahead and convey and support that. And it's really important to keep this in mind because as you are crafting your melodies and your phrases, uh, it can actually change the sound of what you are playing. That's one of the cool things about the guitar is you can go from something super gentle 
to something that's very big and high energy. So let's go ahead and look at an example where I've taken that approach. I've gone from gentle to big to high energy with three distinct different ways in terms of how I am saying what I'm saying on a guitar. It's not just what I'm playing, but it's how I am saying that. So let's go ahead and check out this song right now. So there was an idea of how it went from something melodic and very gentle sounding to a big power chord section and then finally kind of an energetic single note palm muted idea. So for this, when I do the pre-chorus, there's like such a, a really great melody over there. So I just played that in a very gentle way. So you can see me using a lot of our, the ideas from the previous section with hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides and vibrato to bring in some of that melodic nature. Now when you look at the chorus section here, they sing all hail King Jesus, all hail the Lord of heaven and earth, all hail King Jesus, all hail the Savior of the world. And that's, uh, those are very big lyrics. And just imagine if Jesus were to come down for the second coming and that there had to be a soundtrack for that. It's going to be energetic, it's going to be powerful. So that's kind of what inspired me in that moment to uh, just keep things simple. Normally I don't play those kind of power chords in worship songs because they don't always kind of cut through the mix. But in this instance, the band was quite open. So then when I do, you know, power chords like this and So those are just super simple power chords, but in the context, it sounds big and massive and kind of epic. And then when we went into the turnaround before it goes into verse 3, um, it sounded like there was really an opportunity to bring in a lot of energy. So if you're excited about something, your voice is going to contain and convey that excitement. And that's all I did is I played E, B and A, but I used like a polyrhythmic strumming pattern and I basically played this. That's an idea that you can use when it comes to how are you going to add emotion to the song and not just kind of going through the motions instead of um, being rather intentional and deliberate with how you can go from gentle, like I showed you with the melody line in the pre-chorus, to like massive and big power chords to like an energetic single note line. These are all things that you can use to develop your skills and your ability to develop a voice on the guitar and have different ways in which you're going to say um, and play the different parts on your guitar. Now moving on to point three is that you want to emphasize some key lyrics and phrases. What does that mean? Well, so when you are reading the lyrics, sometimes it's going to highlight different parts of the Lord. So in some cases it might highlight the majestic nature of God, the fact that He rules and He reigns. 
At other times, it might highlight something about the kindness of God. Um, whatever the case may be, it's important for you to pay attention to those lyrics and then see how can you best support that on the guitar. Now I'm going to give you an example how I've taken that concept in two different songs. One is What a Beautiful Name, the Hillsong um, classic, and then we're also going to look at Holy Forever. I believe it's a Chris Tomlin version a song, but you're going to look at the Bethel version of that. And in that one, the lyric that stood out for me is um, Holy Forever, where... Um, that is a, such a key scripture, if you look at it in Revelations 4, where it says the elders and the creatures just forever will sing holy forever. Um, it just holy, holy, holy. That spoke to me in the side of, okay, great, instead of just keeping playing the chords, I'm actually physically going to play that part of the melody along with the vocals. Now, it's important to say it's not all of the parts, it's just that one specific section. So what I'm going to show you now is some power chords in how I can support that majestic nature of those lyrics. And number two is just how I can actually take a melody line and play those exact single notes, emphasizing that final phrase in Holy Forever. Let's go ahead and check that out now. Alright, now that might seem counterintuitive because we are talking about how to play uh, more motively by developing a voice on the guitar and all I did there was play power chords, which if you have any guitarist play, it's pretty much going to be sound the same because there's not much variety from a melodic point of view in these power chords. But if you look at those lyrics, it says what a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King, what a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. So lyrics don't really get more epic like that, talking about the nature of God and who he really is and the powerful name of Jesus, right? So in that sense, it just, you wanted to, I think the guitar can serve that part of the song so well by just playing these massive power chords. And, you know, a lot of people say you shouldn't have that sound in church. And I'm just going to say, like, how wrong can you be? Because if you think about the majestic nature of God, the power in the name of Jesus Christ, you want to convey that with some sense of power. And for me, the electric guitar, loads of distortion, loads of attitude to just go ahead and support that idea. We shouldn't be religious about this. And that is the way that you can convey ideas and emotion on your instrument. So I want to encourage you guys. Obviously, you need to do that respectfully. And you're not going to turn every gig into like a rock concert but in that part of the song he just calls for that and nobody in their right mind should have a problem with that if you're a believer in christ and you want to go ahead and just celebrate that powerful name of jesus so anyway that's my mini sermon for using power chords in church when done correctly it can really bring another part of the song to life Alright, so in this section, that was the first chorus, which is a down chorus. And if you just look at the lyrics, it says, And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy forever. So in that instance, what I played is I just, if you think about, And the angels cry, um, the song was obviously very open. So power chords wouldn't have worked, full chords wouldn't have worked. So all I did was imagining the guitar singing just you know some long open lines so i just followed chord tones for the chords which would be
physically playing the actual melody just for that one part. Imagine if you are writing a, an email to somebody and you want something to stand out. You're either gonna bold that piece of text, maybe you'll underline it, maybe you'll use all caps. There's different ways to place emphasis in the written word like that. Now that's kind of what I did there, is I emphasized the lyrics by just supporting that super cool melody line towards the end of the chorus, and then obviously after that, I go right back into guitar mode. So it means that you don't always have to stay static and play the same thing over and over. You can let the lyrics of the song kind of guide you as to what it is you want to play. Now our next point is all about using space and silence strategically. I think it was B.B. King that said something along the lines of, Music is not the notes you play, but it's the spaces in between the notes that you play. Now, I might be paraphrasing that, but it's very important for you as a guitarist to understand that just as we have pauses when we are speaking, and we kind of have to breathe as we are speaking, those things are really essential when it comes to talking to somebody, because if you just speak the whole time, without ever taking a breath or without ever taking pauses, it's just gonna be too much info for somebody to consume and actually uh, take in. It's gonna be too much. So in the same way that pauses and breaths are essential in speech, silence can be a very powerful tool in your musical communication. Now, you don't wanna fall into the trap where you feel the need to fill literally every moment with notes. Instead, you want to ask yourself, how can you use space strategically to create some anticipation or some reflection or even placing some emphasis in certain parts of the song? Now, if you look at saxophone players, for example, they can't play all the time unless they do what's known as circular breathing. They kind of play a line, they have to stop and pause, take a breath and then play another line. Whereas when we are playing guitar, we don't necessarily have that challenge because whether we breathe or not, we can keep playing. We can just keep picking, keep strumming, and never leave a space. So next time, if you want to try and come up with more natural sounding melody lines specifically, try and breathe, and then you play. And when it's time to take another breath, stop playing, take in your breath, and then carry on playing. That will give your playing a much more natural sounding um, feel at the end of the day, because you're not filling up every single space with notes and chords. Now, fifth and final point is all about speaking through your playing and about improvisation. So when it comes to practicing how you speak through your playing, it's a good idea to set aside some time to improvise and try and have a conversation on your guitar. You wanna focus on expressing different emotions or different ideas, and then let your playing flow naturally as if you were speaking through your instrument. And sometimes the less notes, the better. So what helps you with that is, it kind of goes back to our first point, is taking melodies that um, people typically sing and then playing that on the guitar. And then from there, you can start to improvise in and around those ideas. But it all starts with the ability to play a melody on your guitar at first. So for example, if you take the song Agnes Day, um, that's such a great melody, it's a very vocal melody, and then you can go ahead and just try and play that on the guitar without playing it over the album or the recording, and just kind of seeing what you can come up with in that instance. So for example, you might do something like this. Alright, so that's a, a bit of a rendition of the song Agnes Day. And what's happening there is imagine that you had to sing that song and maybe you're a vocalist, well then obviously that'll come easier. But for those of you who play guitar and don't sing like myself, then you um, 
kind of singing vicariously through your guitar in that regard. And when you play a thing like that, which obviously in this case was played more free time, you can see how I'm using spaces to let the, the, the playing breathe there. And this is also making use of volume swell so that the sound is not so in your face in the same way that a, a, a voice might gently swell into a note. And then also not picking all of the notes pick for pick because it's gonna be too much attack, but actually sliding and hammering on and doing all these kind of things. So I literally just picked twice over there. So you just want to get some kind of a semblance of what it might sound like if you were to sing that. And then in a section like this, typically your backing vocals might start supporting the melody. So then I opted for doing uh, what we call dyads or 4-2 dyads. good example of how you might incorporate something that is typical of a guitar like if I do those slides hammer-offs and pull-offs or even something like that's very much a guitar line you wouldn't hear somebody just sing that as a phrase because it's got a lot of big intervals and jumps but then if you can combine some of those guitar typical phrasing but make the main focus to be a melodic vibe then you can get some really great sounding parts and you also don't have to play it as single notes you can play it as, as chords as well So that is something that is very cool when you get into it as it relates to trying to play melodies on the guitar and especially taking well-known songs with strong melodies and see how you can go ahead and replicate that on the guitar. Now as you incorporate these five strategies into your playing, just remember that the goal is not necessarily to become a better guitarist even though that is part of it, but ultimately you want to become a more effective communicator on your guitar so that you can better serve the song and the worship experience. And the great thing about this is that by developing your own voice on the guitar, you can create a sound that's going to resonate with your congregation because it's got that human touch and as a result it can draw them deeper into that worship experience. And it's very important to note that while we can draw inspiration from the idea of Jesus' followers that can recognize his voice, our ultimate aim is to point people towards Christ and not to draw attention to ourselves on the guitar specifically. So as worship guitarists, we are merely vessels through which the Holy Spirit can work to minister to others and bring glory to God. And it just so happens that our gifts and skills can be used as a tool to facilitate that. So with that said, go ahead and take these ideas and techniques and then prayerfully consider how you can use them to create a more expressive and meaningful style of playing. And just remember that when you approach your guitar playing as a means of speaking and communicating and as it relates to supporting these spiritual truths that we are singing, you can connect with your congregation in a deeper level. So be open to experimenting and see how God can use your skills, your gifting, your availability and your ability to grow the kingdom. And at the end of the day, keep practicing, keep seeking his guidance and keep using your gift to lead others into his presence.